Today on your Open Mind GFO report, an alleged retired Navy petty officer claims to have seen top secret UFO files. A Minnesota witness videotapes a recurring UFO and news from the 2016 International UFO Congress. Your Open Mind GFO report starts now. Hello and welcome to the Open Mind GFO Report. My name is Alejandro Rojas. An anonymous witness claiming to have seen thousands of files relating to UFO ET projects while working at the Naval T Telecommunications Center at Naval Air Station Moffett Field in California in the late 80s says he is going public because his secrecy agreement has expired and he would like the government to disclose what they know about UFOs and aliens. As shocking as his claims are, a UFO researcher who formerly worked for the UK's Ministry of Defense, also known as the MOD, says he has no doubts about the witness's background. The witness first made his claims via a report in the Mutual UFO Network, also known as MUFON, UFO reporting system. On February 13th, the witness wrote, I was a radio man third class petty officer at Naval Telecommunications Center within NAS Moffett Field from February 86 to October 89, having maintained a top secret SBI slash ESI NATO slash SIOP compartmental security clearance. The witness says he was tasked with delivering top secret cosmic information to think tanks and defense contractors such as SRI, Sylvania, Lockheed Skunk Works, and Raytheon, among others. He also said he was in contact with a government employee from the UK who also had knowledge of UFO programs. Regarding his UK informant, the witness wrote, he said it was an NSA UK facility tasked with tracking UFOs, including Rendlesham Forest incident. He said that UFO ET were real and that hopefully disclosure would happen in my lifetime since he was in his early 60s at the time. I'm not reporting a UFO sighting, rather a UFO related experience. I have copies of my security clearances. The witness continued, I personally handled, viewed, and delivered thousands of documents involving UFO ET projects. My secrecy agreement with the U.S. government expired in October 2014. At this point in my life, I would like to share my knowledge in hopes that someone will be able to use it effectively towards disclosure. Nick Pope, who worked for the UK's MOD investigating UFOs in the 90s, told the Daily Express newspaper, it's clear from the language he uses and the information he has that he's a genuine insider. I've actually had some personal communication with this individual and have no doubts about his background, claims Pope. According to a recent story in the Daily Express, the newspaper was also able to get in touch with the witness directly. They claim another concern the witness has is for the families of those who have lost their lives in connection to UFOs, including some who the witness believes may have lost their lives due to an attempt to share information that the government did not want out. MUFON spokesperson and OpenMinds.TV contributor Roger Marsh told the Daily Express, this historical case has been assigned to a field investigator within the California MUFON group. The witness told the Daily Express he recently spoke with MUFON investigators for over four hours. When asked if he kept copies of the UFO documents he claims to have seen, the witness responded, legally you are not authorized to walk off with classified information. That is treason and treason is a felony. He continued, I do not possess anything other than my testimony and documents that authorize that I legitimately had individual top secret security clearances. I reached out to Pope via email to verify his statements and get an update on his research into this case. And while Pope says he does see some sign of authenticity in what the witness claims, he advises caution. I've been in touch with the individual concerned for some time now. His phraseology certainly seems authentic, though obviously there is much freely available material on the internet these days that a determined hoaxer can pick up enough terminology to convincingly sound like a genuine insider. The proof of the pudding will be in any material supplied, and on this point, while I've made it clear that the individual concerned should ensure that no classified information is released, I will receive some items shortly that will further help make an informed assessment, explains Pope. 
Pope continued, I've seen some people attempt to pick holes in the story prior to any of the data being placed in the public domain on the basis of some of the individual's statements. I have no intention of entering into a debate about any of this, but would point out that in the shadowy world of intelligence, a person will often alter a few details to mask the true identity of a source. OpenMinds.tv will keep you updated on MUFON and Pope's findings in this case. A witness in Atkin County, Minnesota reported seeing the same UFO every night and provided a video as evidence according to a report in the MUFON Witness Reporting Database. The witness did not provide much information in her report except to say that she was seeing the same UFO on a daily basis. The UFO video was apparently captured at approximately 7.18 p.m. on September 12, 2013. The case was reported to MUFON on the same date. The witness reported the object appeared to be over 500 feet in altitude and about one mile away. Minnesota MUFON field investigator Thomas Knox investigated this case and closed it as an unknown. In the investigation report, the object is described by the witness as hovering, descending, blinking, and pulsing with an apparent size larger than a basketball if held at arm's length. The object appeared to be at an altitude higher than 500 feet and at a distance of more than one mile. Not everyone agrees with MUFON's conclusion. One possible explanation for the lights, speculated by OpenMinds.tv readers, is a bright light, perhaps even the moon, being seen through the leaves of a tree. Let us know what you think in the comments below. The 2016 International UFO Congress wrapped up on Sunday, February 21st, and it was another great success. The place was packed and media from all over the world turned out to cover the event. You can see many of the media reports and pictures from the event at the International UFO Congress Facebook page. Among the events were the awards ceremony. John Greenwald of TheBlackVault.com took home the Researcher of the Year Award, and abduction researcher and marriage and family therapist Barbara Lamb took home the Lifetime Achievement Award. Another part of the UFO Congress is the EBE Film Festival Awards. Jeremy Corbell took home the EBE for Best Short Film for Lazar Cosmic Whistleblower. Paul Davids won the award for the Best UFO Film for his movie Maryland Declassified. And the People's Choice Award went to Tanya Maddenford and Frank Jacob for their film Packing for Mars. Congratulations to all the winners. To find out more about the awards, keep an eye on the International UFO Congress Facebook page and the at IUFOC Twitter feed. We will also be posting more information about the winners and video from the event. Next year's event will be held February 15th to the 19th. The Wikipa Resort, where the conference is held, fills up quickly, so book your room early. In fact, many conference goers have already booked their rooms. Next year should be another great event. That's your Open Minds UFO report for today. You can find these stories and more at openminds.tv. We post fresh UFO news daily. You can also follow us on Twitter at Open Minds TV, and you can find us on Facebook. Let us know if you enjoyed today's episode by liking the episode on YouTube and leaving us your comments in the section below. You can also download our podcast, Open Minds UFO Radio, on iTunes or at openminds.tv forward slash radio. Thanks again for joining us today for OpenMinds.tv. I'm Alejandro Rojas.